Hi, everyone. John here with PT. And Dan was saying the training. How are we doing, Dan? Hey, John. Good. Thank you. Well, you bet. So um, recently, you, you guys know this just because we interact, but I'm dealing with a hip issue and my hip issue is a torn labrum and, and a hip replacement, and all that good stuff. But I got myself right before everything went haywire with that, where I was in pretty good shape. And now that I've become a little gimpy and, you know, still eating, not moving as much, <laughs> the muscles start to change, it's sore in the thigh because of my gait altering and all that good stuff. And it got me thinking about how muscles that aren't used atrophy mm. and there are smaller things we see it in that's really fast where muscles do take a little time but you know you put a, a thing of bananas on the counter and by the end of the week you're debating if you throw them away or me banana bread but right. talk a little bit about why those sales skills in comparison to other things that salespeople are responsible for tend to atrophy if you will or or slide back and why people don't tackle them and I, I guess work those muscles as much as they do other things. It's it's so easy to just rest and relax and do what comes natural to us. So when we think about what does come natural to us, well, number one, we want people to like us. Yes. Usually that's that's the way most of us are. Number two, most of us don't like conflict. Yeah. We don't like causing anyone to feel bad or anything like that. And, and if you just look at just those two, and then you add to it the third one, which is, and typically we like to talk about ourselves. Mm. Yep. That, that's a trifecta of a disaster when it comes to sales. And, and so having to work on a skill set to talk about other people, talk about the prospect, have the prospect talk about themselves, to make the prospect feel actually uncomfortable, which is why they would want to buy from you, to, to do that kind of stuff, to have them where they don't necessarily like you, but they totally respect you. Yes. Those are things that are not natural. They take skill set. They take work. And, and so when we finally get them and we feel like, hey, I can do this, and then we relax, we always resort back to what we typically are. Yeah. So, John, it's just a skill set and a mindset that really needs to constantly be honed and, and worked on and, and developed or you lose it. Yeah. And I think I'd like you to share the story because I think it's very relatable here in where people tend to spend their time. But can you give us that that story behind the kid working at Home Depot and the AC department, and how super well he was doing out of the gate and what then happened that really screwed him up in the sense of sales? And I think that's very common that happens to a lot of salespeople. Just roll out the story and then we can kind of talk it through. Yeah, yeah, sure. So actually it was a Walmart and it was the heater okay. department. <laughs> All right, come on. But but it's okay. It, it, the story is the same. A teenager was looking for some some work and, and the manager of the store said, I'm a little busy right now. Can you go sit on those chairs over in the heater department? I'll be with you shortly. And as he was doing that, this old lady came up to him and said, Sonny, are you working here? I'm trying to find a heater. And he says, well, I'm not working here just yet, but what are you looking for? Let me help you. And and they go over to the heater section and she says, I'm just looking to heat up my bathroom so I can get in and out of the tub and not be freezing. So they start looking at all the different heaters and, and then based on what she was talking about and what she said, he said, I think this is the one that's right for you, right? So as she's leaving, she sees the store manager and says, you got a nice kid there. Well, long story short, after that, they hire him and he is kicking butt selling heaters. They're flying off the store shelves because she went back and told all of her friends about this nice kid at the, at the local Walmart. Yeah. So then corporate calls the, the manager and says, hey, what's going on with all these heater sales? And the guy's like, I don't know, I hired a new kid. And they're like, he hasn't even been to our university of heater school yet. Wait till we send him there. So they send him to the university. He learns all this stuff. He comes back. And the next time an old lady came in and asked him to buy a heater, he says, oh, do we have heaters? And he lowers a screen and shows a 600 PowerPoint slide presentation and never makes the sale. And I, yeah. I think you're right, John, that sometimes we get all this information and all this knowledge and it actually hurts our sales. Yeah. At the end of the day, it's about relating to people and finding out what they need and what they want. Yeah. And, and I think 
if I took you and I put you in a position of a PT appointment and running a PT appointment with somebody, I think you could make that sale without all that knowledge mm -hmm. because of how you approach things. And, and I, I just wish that there was a better embrace of sales skills, sales coaches, be a premier, premier salesperson. And the other stuff, it, it, it's, it's, you can farm it out. You can hand it off to somebody that that's their only focus and you just keep on selling and keep on selling. And unfortunately, I think we go the other way. We spend all our time on those products and features and benefits and we get in the mud pretty quickly. Yeah, yeah totally agree. All right, everybody. See you again tomorrow. See you later.